Hello and welcome to See the Pattern. In this week's episode, we are going to be exploring one of physicists' biggest headaches. It is called the fine-tuning problem. In it, we will explore why it is that we live in a universe which is almost too perfect. The early universe took its time to evolve into its current shape. As we look around, we are amazed that we inhabit a cosmos that fits human life perfectly. In fact, some would say too perfectly. Now, cosmologists insist that the early universe has developed through random chance. Scientific creation stories always exclude God in any form. Yet still, we end up with this incredible orderliness of human DNA, consisting of over 3 billion base chemical units, all starting from nothing. In order to make sense of this problem, you will need to use a good deal of brain power and this, in fact, is a perfect example of the problem itself. In order to listen to the words that I speak and the images you see on the screen, extremely precise processes must take place in the brain's auditory and visual cortex. The sound waves produced must register as meaningful information in a language that you can understand. And as the words form sentences, the meaning of each is connected to the previous. The sound waves may have disappeared, but the meaning remains within your mind. Now this is miraculous enough, but now consider that the molecules inside each brain cell are locked into fixed, predetermined action and reaction. Yet still, you manage to experience new things each day, making each day different from the next. In physics, this problem is known as the fine-tuning problem. Creation myths can be broken into two distinct groups. The first explains creation through a familiar action that people can relate to. For example, in India, one myth states that the forces of light and darkness created the world by using a mountain, Mount Miru, like the paddle in a milk churn, pulling the paddle back and forth until butter solidified out of an ocean of milk. Now, the second wraps creation in a mystery by trying to show that the world was created by totally supernatural means. Modern cosmologists use the second and parallel genesis by suggesting that the universe arose when something emerged out of nothing. Scientists would be offended if we called it magic or supernatural, however. Now, in modern cosmology, the Big Bang was the creation event, and as the universe began to expand, it did so in an orderly fashion, following certain rules known as the constants of nature. These rules are fixed with mathematical precision. For example, the speed of light, and the permeability of free space, and the constants of gravity are fixed, and they cannot change throughout the duration of our universe. Now, these constants create order in nature, but they have to have come from somewhere. And the only somewhere that they could have come from is the chaos that was the Big Bang, at the very beginning before order started to take over. These constants can make or break this newly developing universe. Too much or too little of any of them, for example, too much mass, too little mass, too much gravity, too little gravity, too much charge, too little charge, would cause the new universe to either collapse in on itself or to fly apart too fast for any atoms to be able to form. No new stars would be created, the building blocks of life would not exist, and would not be able to seed the universe to allow life itself to evolve. Precise mathematical laws govern the four fundamental forces of gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and the weak nuclear force. The constants that govern these laws do not change anywhere in our universe. Now, assuming for a moment that all matter in the universe, other than hydrogen and helium, were created in stars and supernova explosion. The weak and the strong nuclear force are the ones which will determine if these reactions are actually possible. Now, a change of just 1% would mean that a supernova explosion would be impossible. Now, the structure of atoms and molecules is determined by the fine structure constant. It's a pure number, approximately 1 over 137. 
And again here, a 1% difference would again mean that no atoms or molecules as we know it would exist. On Earth, this constant also determines how solar radiation is absorbed into the atmosphere and how photosynthesis works in plants. The Sun just happens to emit the majority of its radiation in a part of the spectrum where the atmosphere of the Earth just happens to allow sunlight through without absorbing or deflecting it. And this is another example of the perfect match our universe has thrown up. The Sun's output is determined, in, in the mainstream model, by the gravitational constant. And the atmosphere's ability to allow light through is determined by the fine structure constant as is the plant's ability to photosynthesize. Now these two constants work at opposite ends of the spectrum, gravity on the macroscopic and the fine structure constant on the microscopic. And it is just pure coincidence that these two constants match up exactly. The fine tuning problem has been called one of physics's biggest embarrassments. Now we view life as a fragile and delicate balance in a cold universe. The existence of DNA involves too many coincidences, going right back to the moment of the Big Bang. It contains over 3 billion base pairs, twisted along the ladder of the double helix. Considering that the process of creating the DNA took about 3.7 billion years on Earth, and then add in 10 billion years for cosmic evolution to get to that point, how many slips could have occurred on the way to cause the failure of DNA? Your genes are inherited from your parents. Around 3 million errors occur in this process. These alter your DNA, and along with mutation caused by cosmic rays and X-rays, this makes the odds of life evolving very remote. Figuring out why the universe is so fine-tuned has preoccupied many cosmologists, but some have become deeply uncomfortable with assigning this all to just pure chance. Sir Fred Hoyle famously stated, a junkyard containing all the bits and pieces of a Boeing 747 dismembered and in disarray. A whirlwind happens to blow through this yard, and what is the chance that after its passage, a fully assembled 747 ready to fly will be found standing there? So small as to be negligible. Even if the tornado were to blow through enough junkyards to fill the whole universe. Now quantum mechanics would however tell a very different story, as it shows that the impossible is indeed possible, but explaining all the constants is still a very tall order. One attempt to explain all of these coincidences is called the Anthropic Principle. Here humans are returned to a privileged place in the universe, which is billions of light years large, and its premise is as simple as, intelligent life now exists on Earth, us in other words, and we are capable of measuring these constants that give rise to life. The universe ended up here to create us to measure it. And there can be no universe without humans in it. The evolution of the universe must lead to us. The problem is that this principle does not give us any indication of how we got here, nor anything concrete to measure it against. It could be that the evolution created a match between the human brain and the constants of the universe, or not. There might be a match for a totally different reason, or it could all be an illusion. Quantum mechanics might be able to tell us the probability of an electron appearing at a point in space and time, but it does not have anything to say about how the electrons came to exist in a fine-tuned universe. For a growing number of scientists, the fine-tuning problem can be solved only by accepting that the entire universe is a single, continuous entity working in seamless harmony like the human body. Now everyone accepts that individual cells in the brain and the heart and the muscles together determine the activity of the body as a whole. Each individual cell, when viewed in isolation, survives in a cosmos of the body, alone. Its connection to the others is not visible. Chemicals come in and out in what might seem to be a random pattern. In fact, these chemicals are used in reactions that occur inside of the cell. 
and these reactions are important at two levels. The first to keep the cell itself alive and the second to keep the entire body alive. Sometimes a cell's instructions can become corrupt and it starts to make endless copies of itself, killing the surrounding cells in the process and it eventually becomes a cancerous tumour. Left unchecked, its own futile attempts to defy the system end in failure when the body as a whole dies. Now, did our universe learn to avoid destruction a long time ago through the fine-tuning mechanism? According to the Big Bang Theory, the early universe created equal amounts of matter and antimatter. They should have annihilated each other, leaving absolutely nothing behind. But instead, there was just a little bit more matter than antimatter. About one extra matter part for every one billion parts of antimatter, and which was precisely enough to allow the visible universe to be created. In modern physics, there is an over-reliance on randomness in many of its theories. Yet when we look at the world and the universe around us, we are taken aback by its beauty and complexity. This does not mesh well with the idea of randomness. Now there are more coincidences when we examine some of the dimensionless ratios in our universe, the ones that link the very large to the very small in a very strange way. So for example, the ratio of the electric force, which is really at a very small level, to the gravitational force, which acts at vast distances, this ratio is a very large number. 10 to the power of 40. And again, if we look at the ratio of the smallest elementary particle size to the size of the observable universe, this ratio produces exactly the same number, 10 to the power of 40. Now, what a miraculous coincidence that we happen to be alive and are able to measure this when these two non-related ratios are exactly the same. Now, remember, from the cosmologist's point of view, if we believe in a Big Bang, then the observable universe is a quantity which will change over time. So therefore, it is all the more remarkable from their point of view that these two numbers line up exactly. Now, one theory that attempts to overcome this is called the multiverse theory, or M theory. In here, the idea is that there are almost an infinite number of universes where every combination of constants is possible. Most of them would not create any viable universe for life to exist in, but one did, and we just happen to live in it. The problem here is that it's impossible to calculate any probability when we are dealing with an infinite number of universes, with an infinite combination of constants and laws. But there is another, more appealing possibility. And if we look at the fine-tuning problem, it becomes obvious that there is a hidden pattern that begs the question where it came from. Just like the observation of the chemicals flowing in and out of a cell may end up looking like a pattern that makes no sense until we view it as a whole. We are part of a giant self-organized system, each layer governing how the layer below it operates, much like the human body is made up of cells which are grouped together into tissues with a very specific function. Now these tissues are organized into organs, like the heart, and these organs are grouped together into an organ system, for example the circulatory system. And finally the organ systems form the organism. And Let's not talk about how DNA plays a huge part in how this was all constructed from just two cells during conception. The problem at the moment is when we view the universe, we don't see this structure, we do not see these systems. We look at an individual bit and we just make assumptions that it was caused by a random process of luck. Well, maybe it's time to shed this notion. Now, in the previous episode where we looked at whether the universe is alive, we've already discussed some of the evidence that supports some sort of structure that might exist. The problem is that I guess just like the single lonely cell inside of our body, it's very hard to make sense of everything else that is going on around you. 
All biological systems create feedback loops that allow them to stay in balance with their surroundings. Like the way we are able to maintain our body temperature. Well, maybe the universe has constants which are there to keep the universe itself in check, a sort of feedback loop to stop the universe from going in a direction which would harm itself. I hope this insight into another one of mainstream's biggest problems has given you an understanding for how the electric universe could form part of this notion or idea that our universe is actually alive and the evidence that we see are these connections in terms of the um, universal filamentary structures which potentially are were Birkeland currents that there is energy that has flowed or is flowing across our universe and that we are just a very small part of a much much bigger machine as always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.